Mantic Games has just finished up a Kickstarter campaign for their 10mm, 12mm, not really sure, mass warfare game called Epic Warpath. I know it seems like I should have done a video about the Kickstarter campaign while it was ongoing, but actually I have horrible luck with referring people to things that I want them to finance. So I actually did Mantic a favor by not recommending people go to this Kickstarter. Otherwise, it would have never been funded. It would have just collapsed. Anyway, the Kickstarter's over now. You, there's nothing you can do about it. It has been financed. It worked. I am a backer, and I'm a backer for several reasons. W one... One simple one is that I can use the assets from this game, both for the intended Epic Warpath game, but also as an auxiliary troop for some mech games that I play, and I needed some small little troops to accompany, some ground troops to accompany the battle mechs. I could obviously do the same thing with Game Workshop's Legions Imperialis, but I like a bit of variety in my life, and anyway, this game, Epic Warpath, is co-designed by Alessio Cavatore of Middle-Earth Strategy Battle Game, which is a very strong game system, one of my favorites. So I'm eager to see what Alessio and Matt from Mantic come up with. I'm confident in the game, but I don't know near as much about Mantic's gaming universe as I do about Warhammer uh, 30k or even 40k, but fortunately, Mantic provides a $0 download of a book called the Warpath Sourcebook, and I have read it eagerly from cover to cover, and it's really good. I'm here to recommend that you read that. The Warpath Sourcebook contains Pretty much everything you need to know about the setting for Mantic's uh, Dead Zone, which is a skirmish game, Firefight, which is a war game, and obviously the upcoming Epic Warpath Mass Warfare game. One of the things I find interesting about it is that it is very much a universe that serves its game. It's not a launch pad for a whole publishing arm, you know, the way that Dragonlance was for D&D, or the Horus Heresy, and, and the entire universe really is for Warhammer, f Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer 40k, Warhammer Age of Sigmar. This this is likely refreshing to you if you feel overwhelmed by vast amounts of lore. Like, where do you start? How can you ever catch up? Well, with Warpath, you read eh, 186 pages and you're pretty much all caught up. Or if you can't be bothered, you read like half the book. Or, or a quarter of the book. The story isn't that complex, and I'm even going to give you a summary right now to wet your palate. The GCPS, that's the Galactic Co-Prosperity Sphere, is an sort of interstellar governing body run by the Council of Seven, a group of greedy, basically, CEOs who represent the interests of a bunch of megacorporations. It expanded into space from Earth and developed a faster-than-light drive, the McKinley Drive, and then expanded some more. That's the spheres in the name, Galactic Co-Prosperity Sphere. Every time they expand, they sort of call everything that they've discovered a sphere. So the, the, the first foray into intergalactic space was the, the first sphere. And then when they pushed further, it was the second sphere. And then further, the third sphere, and so on. The GCPS maintains a military force, which is the very cool GCPS faction in the game. As an excuse to seize control of the GCPS, the Council of Seven engineered an Orc Rebellion. It got out of hand, and so the Council of Seven developed the Enforcers, which are humans modified with nanite technology to become super soldiers. This is the Enforcers faction in the game, and the Orcs themselves are the Marauder faction. Space dwarves exist, and they go around mining asteroids and planets. This is the Forge Fathers faction. Space elves also exist, and they're an ancient race guided by the collected knowledge of their ancestors. They're largely opposed to war, mostly, but they engage because they must. Th this is the Asterian faction in the game. Space rats are the Veerman faction. Nobody knows where they came from or why they exist, but they ravage planets of resources or leech off corporate installations and slaughter humans, forge fathers, and Asterians alike. The greatest threat to everyone, though, is the plague. It turns living beings into semi-sentient zombies, sort of Dawn of the Dead style, driven to kill. This is the plague faction. And that's it. 
well, I mean, mostly, it's not a complete picture of the entire setting. Like, in Dead Zone, you get to know specific or, uh, corporations, like Maison Labs. And there's a nameless alien horror out there, apparently, that this source book doesn't cover. Uh, that's the nameless faction, apparently. But those are the, the important things you absolutely need to know for the game to make sense, and this book contains a lot of details about each one. Now, I'll admit there are a few awkwardly familiar elements to the Warpath setting that even a modestly skeptical reader is sure to notice. Human super soldiers in power armor, space dwarves, an ancient elf-like race, uh, rat folk villains, space orcs. Am I describing Warpath or am I describing Warhammer? Well, the answer is yes. The Warhammer 40,000 universe is sort of Warhammer fantasy in space, using a lot of familiar fantasy tropes. Long story short, the Warpath setting takes fantasy and puts it into space, rendering very similar results to when Games Workshop did the same. Still, there are some elements that seem to mirror Warhammer more than fantasy in space might demand. The design of the Asterians, the, the space elves, uh, take inspiration from anime, pretty, uh, pretty obviously, much like the Tau in Warhammer do. Super soldiers, I guess that's not really a fantasy trope, but it is something that Warhammer 40,000 did, and Mantic has clearly uh, taken inspiration from it. But let's face it, it's no secret that a sci-fi war game is up against Warhammer 40,000, whether it wants to be or not. That's just the reality of the market. If you're trying to sell an alternative to Warhammer 40,000, then you just have to provide something familiar. And transhuman super soldiers, space elves, and orcs, it, that hits all the same notes. So if you're looking at this and you think, oh, this is just like a Warhammer 40,000 ripoff, the answer is, well, yes, but also not at all. Luckily, it's a really big space out there in imaginary land, so we can have both. Here are things I like about the Warpath setting. Whether the Warpath setting is comfortingly familiar to you or uncomfortably similar to Warhammer 40,000, it does have a lot going for it. The history of the Warpath galaxy is a pleasure to read, with lots of fun and quirky stories. The manufactured orc rebellion is a great spin on the orc trope. The mindless horror that are the Veermen make them easy baddies, and because they're basically rat folk, you can imagine them lurking around every corner. I love the variety of the factions, but also that they're manageable. I mean, look, I wouldn't give up my nine loyalist and nine traitorous 40k space marine legions for anything, and and my cybernetic Martians and the Battle Sisters and all the other factions, but you do have to wonder sometimes whether Games Workshop ever regrets starting with 18 iconic factions and then a bunch of the Imperium, and then the Xenos, and the Chaos Powers. Warpath has just the six, or, or seven, or, or whatever. It depends on what you're counting. You can remember them all, and they each have exactly one theme to design your game mechanics around. And you know, I mean, in reality, I'm, I'm, st I'm already having a hard time choosing which two factions I'm going to select as my Kickstarter reward. I, I love the variety of factions, and I love that they're each visually unique and appealing. The plague is a proper biohazard that everybody has to fight against, and the army is horror movie disgusting. The Forge Fathers have big chunky armies, while the Asterians are lithe and hyper-futuristic. Even the plain old GCPS Marine Force, which is comprised of just regular you know, non-modified human soldiers, that's appealing with kind of a traditional sort of World War II in space military look. Or maybe not mil maybe not World War II, but like, you know, just it looks generically military. And it's nice. It's really nice. It's probably going to be one of the factions I, I take. Anyway, best of, of all, I guess, for me, Warpath is relatively hard sci-fi. I mean, Warhammer 40,000 is pure science fantasy, which is fine because I grew up loving space wizards and ancient space religions, but I also grew up loving humanist science fiction, the universes where there are no gods or demonic forces, only laws of nature, and heretofore alien phenomena. So it's just kind of nice to be able to dip into a universe that consists only, mostly, uh, of what you see. There are psychics in Warpath, uh, in some species, at least in Firefight, so the setting does allow for the existence of 
high, very advanced minds with abilities beyond human understanding. It's not so common, however, that it gets any mention in the source book. I had to go to the firefight rules to, to learn about the psychics at all, and it doesn't define the setting the way psychers do in Warhammer or the Jedi do in Star Wars. Whether you're interested in playing Epic Warpath or not, the Warpath source book is a great world-building read. There are some real gems in the little stories behind each faction, and best of all, there's a lot of discussion about very specific weapons and vehicles. I mean, this is a true RPG-style source book with lore for flavor plus lore that actually influences mechanics. It's a great example of a settings overview, and if you're at all curious about a new, or a not so new, but a uh, maybe a sci-fi setting that you you might not be familiar with. Check this out. I mean, it's zero dollars. It's a it's a really good read. I'll put the link down in the description below. Thanks for watching.